or playgirl. No, don't move. Don't move. A fascinating, eerie story of a mad killer who loved to paint beautiful women and then murder them only <laughs> because they moved. <laughs> no, don't move. Don't move. <laughs> You will cringe with terror in this nightmare of horror as this devilish fiend paints his warped masterpieces. A shattering, unforgettable, psychedelic experience that will hold you spellbound on the edge of your seat.
You must see Playgirl Killer in shivering color. Meet the Centerfold Girls. They're the most beautiful girls in the world. They live in a world of glamour, beauty, excitement. But sometimes it turns to terror. <coughs> it's loaded with suspense. It's loaded with girls. The Centerfold Girls. Rated R. It's loaded with all sorts of suds. It's sure to get your dishes clean. <laughs> the it's Centerfold, the centerfold girls. girls. And, and it's one of our girl. Two, yeah, it's one of our two. Those are our two fantastic films that are going to be next week on the Drive in Asylum double feature. Same time, same place. Super excited. We promised you some craziness and we're going to deliver it. So uh, <laughs> Did we promise craziness? We promised uh, scumminess. How about that? I, I didn't that's... sign any contract. I no. make no promises. But I think that there will be enough to excite and offend everybody in next week's two, two fantastic films. I watched Playgirl Killer this week, and I texted Bill for it was even over, and I said, this movie is perfect for our show. <laughs> yeah, this came out of nowhere to be a feature. Yeah. So. yeah Those like, are the best kind. So yeah, I said, I love this movie so much. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to show it. Hey, I love The Girl in Room 2A. How about that movie? I think it's Shocker. splendid. Mm -hmm. it, it plays a lot better than Mirrors, that's for sure. Uh, How about not... that old lady getting her head set on fire at the end? Yeah, she, she was mean, first of all. Yeah. She was really okay. mean. They all yeah. were. I don't know what their problem was. Like, where is all this anger coming from? They but, hated um, girls. They hated yeah. women. They had issues about, in that place. How about her son Frank's room? He had all the like blood and like the heads and jars and stuff in formaldehyde. What's going yeah. on with Frank? Well, they kind of set him up to be the guy in the red suit. He's yeah, the literal red herring. But uh, that said, he kind of had a change of heart at the end. He was going to let her go. Yeah. <sighs> How about what a terrible uh, way to end up? He was going to let her go and he brought her the key and she still fucked it up. She was like, like, get out. And she went back to the room. She's like, oh, by the way, Frank. And, and it was like, no, get out. Frank's dead. He's too fat to hang. <laughs> Why did she go back to the to the room? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. I, I love I love when the blonde girl gets hit with the sword and she's bleeding everywhere and she just stumbles out, screams at her, and then just keeps stumbling out further. Yeah. And yeah, oh, man. And uh, how about Jack's? Uh, I love that you called it out. Jack had a whole posse of people to come help him beat the fuck out of these guys, and then he had a Benny Hill race with the uh, masked uh, red uh, person at the end. I think it was oh. kind of like. Could you imagine just sitting around and being like, hey, you want to go beat the fuck out of a whole bunch of people? Yeah. Like, yeah. I really need somebody. How about, to... how about their death trap for him? They put him in an old car and then dropped a snake in it. They didn't even wait around to see if he died. Just shoot him. Yeah, they were, they were not really. I'm surprised they got away with that shit for as long as they did. Because they weren't so <sighs> good at it. They were not good at all. They were, I'm not going to say they're the worst we've seen, but they're not the best. They're not as bad as the Giallo police, who are no, totally incompetent. They, thank God they didn't call them out. They called the, oh. po the Giallo posse, and the Giallo posse got stuff done. Well, yeah. So, okay, there really was no police in investigation in this, but there was somebody conducting their own secret investigation. Yeah. How about, uh, Bill called it out. Nearly every woman in this movie is impossibly beautiful. It's really wild. Like, it's like, I mean, if you're going to make a sexploitation Jala, definitely, you know what I mean? Like, have Dick Randall pick the, the actresses. That's my first advice, bit of advice for you. I didn't understand it because they were presenting these as bad girls. Yeah. You know, these were like the bad, this was the bad girl element, and they were doing shoplifting. Uh, but the people that they were presenting to us as shoplifters, they were really impossibly beautiful. So wouldn't they be hookers first? I'm just saying. 
<laughs> you might you be able think. to make more money hooking. I like when she was like, uh, I only have fifty dollars for the week, but I'll give it to you. Like I think fifty fifty bucks even back then wouldn't last that long. The other uh Alden called out the uh royalty free music in the last forty five minutes. How about that torso uh riff that kept hitting randomly? You'd get the torso sounding trailer riff throughout the oh. wow. torso. Um I love the bad guy's outfit at the end of this. The the kind of she's kind of like the Red Queen. Um, yeah, yeah, it, I love it. Um, it was great, and uh, I like their I, that they built a machine to spray blood into her room. Okay, okay. <laughs> Seems like an awful lot of work to make her crazy. I didn't understand that part of it. I think I even asked you while the movie was on. Yeah. I was like, you know, why are they messing with her like this? Why is it important that they mess with, with her, the, the victims first? They get them psychologically devastated. Yeah. First. And then they wrap them up in carpets and carry them down the steps. They were into it. They're they amazing. were just full of boogie creeps. Yeah. Just being mean, just to be mean. I don't get people like that. Yeah, they also uh, like throwing people off cliffs. Well, the cliff was pretty convenient. It was. <laughs> if you got one, use it, right? I think you should. I mean, like yeah. the car, they could lure the car off their cliff if the car ever bothered them. How about that Benny Hill chase at the end, though? If you put Yakety Sacks in the end, I mean, that would have been <laughs> stumbling. I like that he walked right into that vase getting broken over his head. There's a lot of pottery destruction in this movie. That other guy threw that ball of pottery down the steps on them. And they just walked right through it. That must have been an eggshell vase because he yeah. just totally, it, it did not stop him at all. No. She he hit him really hard with it that. too. And he was mm -hmm. like, eh. You called it out. The production manager of this movie is Mosaic from Frankenstein 80. Ciro uh, Pappas. Ciro Pappas, yeah. And Mario Mancini was also involved in this. Who uh, mm -hmm. didn't he direct Frankenstein eighty? Yeah, mm -hmm. I called it the bill too. Uh, if you watch a lot of Italian movies, you might see Carlo Mancini's name, Carlo Mancini CSC, his name in the credits. And uh, I wondered for a long time who is Carlo Mancini and why is she in every Italian movie I've seen. And I learned that she is a graduate of the CSC, which is one of the film colleges. And basically, if you had a graduate from those film colleges in your movie, you got uh, tax subsidies. So Carl Mancini is not in a lot of these movies. She was paid for them, and, or she's put in the credits for them, and she was brought into a lot of movies. But she's not in them. They still got the uh, tax credits. Uh, but if you ever watch Italian movies, chances are 90% of the time, Carl Mancini's name's in the credits for all sorts of movies across all sorts of genres. So uh, I was excited to see her in the credits. I thought he had more of a Mark Blankfield thing going, Tracy, but Judge Reinhold, I can see too. He's an American actor too, which is funny. And most of his credits are TV appearances. Um, but yeah, it's wild that he's like an American actor in this and he never did anything else in Italy. I like that Frank brought our lead uh, another outfit and he was like, I, I really like this one. <laughs> he brought her a more demure outfit than any of the outfits that she wore in. He was supposed was no... to be the hero, but he was into some kinky shit. Yeah. Well, not the hero, but he was the sympathetic person. He was kind of like the um what was the kid's name in Last House on the left? The, the like the the one that he's had him blow his brains out at the end. Oh yeah. <laughs> Junior or whatever. Yeah. That was that was him in this movie. Yeah. Yeah, because like, she did the same thing. She's like, "I want you to save me. I want yeah. you to get me out of here. I want you to, because you're a nice person." I mean, compared to the rest of them, yeah, they have quite the scam. They're like, "What if we have a halfway house for girls in trouble?" Okay, and in this halfway house, we'll psychologically break them down with fake blood. Okay, keep going, and then we'll take them to your place in the country. Uh huh. And then we'll use a special machine to stab them in the stomach a whole bunch of times. And then we'll throw them off a cliff and make it look like a suicide. I know. I'm sorry. Being stabbed that many times, if they find your body and take a look at it, they're going to yeah. 
they're going to know that you didn't die from falling off a cliff. It's a plan. I'm not saying it's a good plan. But I'm also saying they also realize that they're up against the Jawa police bill. So true. there's yeah. a great chance that they're going to get away with it. There was no hope of a crime like that being solved anyway, so they could just get away with that shit. Yeah. So it's it's about the best plan that they can possibly have. Um, they have great fashion sense, though, and their idea of making women repent through hitting them with swords and knife weapons. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even trying to get them to repent. I mean, they were, that one woman was like, yes, please forgive me. And then she got real mean and she said, there is no forgiveness. Yeah. And what are you I'm doing? Gonna... This... <laughs> yeah. It's very much like, hey, uh, how do we find out if you're a witch? We'll drown you. And if you drown, you're not a witch. Oh, okay. What was it that uh, Reese Witherspoon says to Kiefer Sutherland in Freeway about that? She, he's, she's, she like turns on him and he's like shocked that she can articulate herself this way. And she's like, well, you just wanted to do this as a sex type thing. You act like you're on some kind of crusade, but this is really a sex thing for you. That's what I these people were that. in yeah. this movie. <laughs> That's why they're dressed up so well. Like nobody dresses like that. Norris says, let's talk about the blood standing on the floor. That machine was literally spurting blood. Like, it wasn't just a blood stain. It was, like, spurting blood. I like that she almost got it cleaned up, and then it got all bloody again, and finally she just brought out that rug, and she was like, eh, just put a rug over the blood stain. I would, too. And what what was being pumped into her room? Was it blood? Because you could tell that whatever that is is in blood. If you've touched it, if you tried to clean it up, you wouldn't smell it. How convincing was this blood? Not very. Also, how about Jack got the place across the way from her? And whenever she finally got locked in and he had a saver, he threw that flower pot at the window and it did absolutely nothing. It like, like bounced Maurice off the window. Road. Yeah. And then he had a, like, instead of going down the front steps like a, an adult, he's like, I'll just slide down this, <laughs> slide down this pipe. And uh, did the street below. And then he got in there and wasn't paying attention and got knocked out by the old lady with the telephone. And he had some when... parkour moves. The way he, he climbed up the side of a building. He did it yeah. several times. Yeah, he got his buddies to give him that boost. And then that door was locked and they mm-hmm. busted through it. I mean, he's an early parkour. You're, that's a great call. He climbed right into the window. Yeah. He climbed into the window and I was thinking, what if there's someone just waiting at that window to hit Yeah. Him? And he I was mean, like, eh. they probably could have figured out that would be the window that he would come in. They were dumb. This movie had the prerequisites for being on the show, though. A lot of women screaming, so which is important. Oh. And uh, the screams. And then uh, both movies tonight, if you didn't guess the theme, it's guys getting involved with women that are probably going to ruin their lives. And uh, Jack, Jack just gets pulled into this, and she's like, I know your sister got killed. Also, I love that like her sister's ex boyfriend had already moved on and was with that blonde lady. Like he was like, he's like, yeah, I still went out with her and I still saw her, but and we would knock over places and we did all sorts of robberies. But I, I've already moved on. And the brother's like, yeah, okay. He's like, you want a beer? Yes, if he wanted a beer like that times, like that was going to make it better. So these still joined us posse later. Th- these were both movies about a woman being pulled into a conspiracy too. Mm-hmm. Because it happened to both of the leads in these movies. It happened to Kitty Wynn and her voodoo conspiracy. And then this was sort of, this one was much more complicated though, because it oh, wasn't yeah. only one person that wanted these women. There were other people exploiting them too. Mm-hmm. Because she had some kind of contact at the at the jail. So that person had to know that everybody that they sent these whenever they would send girls to this house something bad happened to them yeah that was somebody that someone knew there was a whole circle of pervy people doing this to to these poor girls this has just been going on to shoplift they were just only shoplifting well we see what happens to shoplifters in argento movies and tenabre that first girl steals the book and she ends up getting pages of it shoved down her throat and and killed so she wishes she hadn't stole it yeah, shoplifting is not well considered in the world of Jawa. So, you know, it's, I guess that's how it is. Do you think in, in Tanabra, she thought he was store security? 
following yeah. her home and killing her. A hundred percent. Yeah. Also, we have to remember that that movie set after nuclear war, which I love that we were still making paperbacks post nuclear war. I know. That's the, most, the most bullshit explanation. Like Argento well, was like, what, what if I tell everybody it's a post nuclear war movie? It's just, you know, it's fake. It's fake science. It's an alternate reality. It's a reality with, because remember he said the other movie took place. Phenomena took place in a reality where the Nazis won the war. That's why everybody just got other. real mean. Yeah. This movie could be too. Everybody was real mean. Uh, there's a lot of people getting set on fire and those effects are effective. Tracy brought up the, the lady got her head straight up on fire and she survived yeah. it just for a couple seconds to stab the other guy in the stomach. I mean, I mean I'm surprised pretty... it killed her at all because she, oh. I mean, she looked like she was pretty severely burned, but yeah, she probably, her head still... went right up too. I was shocked. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's really she used cool. a lot of product. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> maybe don't fumble around with fire when you're putting that much, uh, uh, aqua aquanet in your hair. She didn't use her conditioner. Her mm -hmm. hairstylist warned her. Mm -mm. And look what it's... happened to her. It just like went poof, like bug. Remember oh. in bug when her hair goes up? It's like Michael so, Jackson like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Totally. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, lots of people getting burned. This movie gets kind of grisly. It's got a lot of blood in it. Um, I think that the violence in this movie is pretty shocking. And I yeah. don't know, in the first, uh, when we talked about it before we watched it, I didn't remember how violent it was. I was highly satisfied with those special effects, especially the burns. It looked oh. real. Yeah, like, and also especially... the... Go ahead. Even the guy's hands on that thing, and the, it, it, they, they burn it on the fireplace, and you can see skin stuck there. And it looked like pretty much the way it would probably look in real life. How about the Tales from the Crypt appearance where the skull showed up from Tales from the Crypt? They scared her with it. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that they they had a light come on and she was killing the one girl. The light goes off. She's gone. The light comes on. She's killing the girl again. And then the light comes on the third time and there's a bloody head in her bed. And then they come in and inject her with drugs. I mean, they're <laughs> fucking thorough. Like they, that they, part... love, they love their job. They really love fucking with people. I have yeah. to admit, I kind of admired that in them. I used to do things like that to my babysitters. Mm. Like I would scare them by making the lights go out and like lighting it like the Brady Bunch style, you know? Uh, were you like that kid in, uh, what's that movie, N Nightmare? Is that the movie with the kid that does all the pranks? Yes. Yeah. Or the Deadly Spawn uh, is yeah. a better. I, I was Charles mm. as a kid. I still am Charles. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they really went all out. They were like, we're going to, we're not just going to spook you. We're going to inject you with knockout drugs. Yeah. Yeah. They really, Trick again, they were not planning yeah. this stuff out. Like they could have done that a lot more effectively. Yeah. But uh, like it, I mean, I like their resolve. Also, like you said, their whole thing is like, uh, you know, oh, we're trying to get people to repent, but really, we're rock hard doing these killings. Like, we're loving every minute of it. Do you know what I mean? Like they, yeah, they were getting off on it. Let's just admit it. It was disturbing. Yeah, I liked when they went to the insane asylum to talk to that girl, and they're like, uh, <laughs> they're like, she's like, uh, oh, let me do this, and she's like, two A, and then she starts naming people, and the girl starts screaming, and then. She and like her sister can't even stand to watch it. And then she's like, Look, the pe person in the paintings is definitely the, the thing that I saw. And then the girl just like smashes that glass and they just leave. Like, okay, see you later. Like, she's never gonna be good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, maybe she was getting somewhere in her art therapy, and you guys just went the whole way backwards and like just like took her all the way back. And you're not cops. How would you get to come in and interrogate them? Why who would let you? This asylum is horrible. You know, one thing I noticed while I was watching this, I've started to notice in movies how the concept of being isolated is becoming harder and harder to imagine. 
because we're so mm -hmm. inundated with connectivity like that you yeah. know the internet your cell phone your smartphone is always with you and even if you didn't have it you know it's it, if you want to call someone it's pretty easy to find them and uh it makes people in movies like this seem like they're living in total isolation because here she was this mm -hmm. young girl like um remember the other victim her brother her brother judge reinhold was looking for her he didn't even know that any of this stuff was happening to his sister but mm -hmm. she didn't call him she didn't send him a text or an email you know they didn't facetime with each other because he hadn't talked to her in a really long time yeah so I mean, back then that wouldn't be so hard to imagine, but now it just seems absurd because yeah. like, why didn't he just text her and say, what the, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. So it's just, and I'm he, starting to lose sight of that, you know, in, in movies. Yeah. And also like when someone gets taken to the woods, like there's no, like, you know, like she didn't have a phone in the place. You know what I mean? And um, like she didn't even have a bathroom where she was at in this. She just had, like you said, just a sink in the room and that's it. Like that, she was... Oh my God! Thank you for bringing up the sink. Well, mm -hmm. I love that she had a sink and she had a literal water closet. It was yeah. It, it was an indentation in the wall with a curtain over it, and there was a sink in there. Was there a toilet? Because what, otherwise, what would be the reason for having that indentation with the curtain and everything? But yeah, all we all we saw was a sink. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by her water closet. <laughs> I yeah. want one in my own room. <laughs> yeah. Just a sink. I you know what? You know those real fancy houses in Squirrel Hill. I went through one once because it had uh they had a uh a sale, you know what I mean, an estate sale in it. And I and I'd always wanted to see the inside of one of those places. So Becca and I went through. And on the top floor there was a kid's bedroom and it just had a sink in the middle of the room and that was it. Is that a Pittsburgh sink? It was on like the third floor, just a sink. Ew. Yeah. Could it have been the, the remains of what was once a bathroom? And that's all. No, because still... it was like right in the middle of the room and like everything was kind of around it. It was weird. It was like almost like a, uh, a work sink. It was very weird. And it, it was, this house was falling apart. There were like holes in the walls and the floor and stuff, but from the facade, from the outside, it was one of those gorgeous Squirrel Hill houses, you know, that's yeah. been there forever. It was interesting. Uh, well, I'm glad we watched this one. I'm glad we watched both of them. Even though Mirrors was flawed, I, I enjoyed it as well. And it was good to experience with everybody. Yeah. I liked Mirrors. I didn't want to give the impression yeah. I didn't like it. It's not as good as The Girl in Room 2A, though. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the, the good one of the two. So, uh, And this was sort of like a second feature a lot of times, you know, yeah. throughout most of its life. It obviously was the first feature for... The, its initial release but it hung around for a lot of years as mm -hmm. a second and third feature so mm -hmm. i don't know it just seems like a movie that nobody really talks about as being great mm. but i think it's pretty good yeah i think it is too this would play well with what have you done with solange uh, which is uh an even darker uh girls and school girls in peril movie mm -hmm. um, i like this be better than solange i don't know oh, do you i like solange better because joe damato shot it but i like i like them both. this though you know what though this one's got some cool costumes and it's got some weird elements in it like who makes all these machines and like i'm still like why does that guy have all the heads in his room frank like there's a lot of stuff in here and uh also like our heroine isn't like totally pure you know what i mean like she's mm -mm. she did some stuff and she's a bad girl yeah she's not the worst like but compared to the other people in the movie she's not the, no. yeah she's still like surly and she doesn't like anybody and she wears giant belts like those belts are huge <laughs> she had on like what does she have a title belt <laughs> she was like wearing yeah uh but she's proud of that belt she worked hard for that belt yeah she did she stole it probably she's <laughs> I imagine that she, her shoplifting was like the Ben Cut stealing kind of thing. She was like putting it down her pants, and you know that's what that belt was for to put stuff. Yeah, behind my it. girl, she's one too. She's gonna get a skirt. <laughs> yeah, stick it under her shirt. <laughs> Got a freezer full of meat. Uh, yeah, the switch between Italian and English is generally when a lot of the uh, scenes uh, were cut from the American version for time. 
so that's why they're untranslated a lot of times so uh that's what what happens but i once you watch enough of these you get kind of used to it and you're like oh, okay it's it's not we'll be back to english soon enough <laughs> who was the guy that just randomly showed up to pull a snake out of the car that would you know what i mean it was just like a passerby he was a like, good samaritan yeah he like just went zip and he just picked up the snake and says you don't need this and threw it out and then he had a knife and cut that's there's just people that roam italy and say i think i need to rescue someone from a car oh there's a guy that's being beset by a snake if you see Let's something rescue. you do something sam yeah see something that's the way something. it is in, in italy mm. they help you out there they do how beautiful was that uh when she first got to the uh that the town where the uh apartment was that plaza that she walked through was really gorgeous oh the whole place was just yeah. flawless yeah also my favorite part of the of the whole movie other than the the costume and the woman's head getting set on fire was uh the pickup line when they were eating lunch and he's like uh these are the ro- best roast beef sandwiches in town and she's like oh she said have you ever been here before and he said no He's like, how do you know? And he pointed to the sign that said, hey, friends, best roast beef sandwiches in town. Made me laugh out loud. I was like, pretty funny. Like, he's getting laid. You know? I don't know. She kind of did seem a little too pretty for him. Way too pretty for him. Like, she's, like, impossibly gorgeous. Uh, He's just like, yeah, I'm kind of, you know, I'm okay. But... Oh, they have beautiful us, children. They gave us a fabulous shot of inside of his briefs when he jumped out of that oh, bed. When he jumped out of bed, we got to see a full nut. And uh, I mean, that was pretty wild. I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready to see Scrotum tonight. But here we are. We did it. We got through it. This movie was bold. It was, it bold. was bold. He was just sleeping just straight up in, in a banana hammock. And he's like, I didn't even adjust. I didn't realize I'd be getting out of bed this quickly. Um, didn't realize that after shimmy down a pole in the middle of the night. So, uh, but he did it and we're proud of him. Uh, yeah. So I hope everybody else enjoyed this. I had a blast. Can't wait for next week's two movies. I got to tell you, uh, playground killer is, it's something else. It, it, it goes in the tradition of Bill and Sam movies of crazed painters that uh, we do love movies where, where painters, uh, mess up stuff and, and get mad about easels for this guy trust me the trailer tells you but it's true if you move while he's painting you he's gonna lose his mind he uh does not like it at all but also every woman he is not an attractive man and every woman is in love with him it's like he's an artist and uh and they're all like they're all temptresses so uh yeah get ready for that it's uh it's gonna be good it played with a lot of movies too i know we've seen it show up before in uh is a another feature so so that'll be fun did we ever show bloodbath on this show uh, if only i had a list i don't think we list. did we have to do that movie sometime we... you no, know what movie didn't. that is don't you yeah let me look up just to double check to be sure bloodbath was got... the one that was assembled out of like five different films and some of it's about a vampire and some of it's oh, about yeah. a mad sculptor. Yeah. You know what's crazy is um uh that's why I made this list because otherwise like I can't even remember all, all the stuff we've shown, you know? Yeah. It's it's come in so helpful uh so many times. I'm looking right now. Well we oh. should do that sometime. Yeah, we should if we have an I don't think we've done it. I'll have confirmation in about two seconds. Once I, I uh, get my eyes working. Let's see. In the meantime. Uh, we have uh, not. Blood Freak, Blood Mania, Blood on Satan's Club, Bloody Moon. We have not done it, Bill. So, oh, the green up, slime are coming, Sam. Oh, how great is it the green slime has its own theme song? I love that theme song from the Green Slime. Yeah. Anything with a theremin gets my attention. Oh. Green Slime. 
I don't know. I didn't like the green slime when I first saw it because I wanted it to be about green slime. And it yeah. wasn't. They turned into these monsters. Yeah. The poster's really great, though. I mean, that ad is is magical. I wanted what I was promised, damn it. All I wanted yeah. was my fair share. Well, it's close. Starring Sharon Tate, Fearless Vampire Killers. Oh. I, I bet that was drive. after the, the Manson murders. Mm. Yeah, probably. This is from 69. First Tucson showing, though. Green Slime got a huge, uh, that's a really big uh, top of the ad. I mean, there's a lot in there. I like that. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> do you like oh, this movie? Whatever happened like to Anne Alice? Movie. I do. Any movies that are questions about women, I always like. I have not seen How to Commit Marriage with uh, Bob Hope, Jackie Gleason, and Jane Wyman. I dig this one. I really love Geraldine Page in this movie. And, oh, of course, yeah. Ruth Gordon. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I really like this one. It's got a lot of uh, random killing. She's unstoppable in this movie. Yeah, she's one of those people. that She's like Pearl. Yeah. She just keeps killing people, and no one is ever able to, like... <laughs> to stop slow her down no someone's you can't slow her down at all like if she just loves just, it if she decides to kill you she's gonna kill you and you're not gonna yeah. be able to stop her in any even way. when she moves to different places she's like you think she'd be like maybe i should stop killing you know mm -hmm. so people don't track me no she doesn't she can't stop no won't stop can't stop oh oh the apaches Oh. Sweet body of Deborah. Yeah. Wow. Sisters in leather plus title censored. An invitation to a murder. Wow. Well, this is, we know, Sweet Body of Deborah is one of those Carol Baker giallos, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So here it is, market. Well, okay, this is rated R, actually. I see a, mm. uh, an R in the lower right left corner. So and it says the whole program is rated X. And I think it mm. did get an X initially. Oh, wow. Mm. Mark the Apache was like, more. yeah, the Apache was like, buck 75 a carload, get everybody in there and <laughs> just jam in that car. There's a lot of single guys paying a buck seventy five. That was pretty steep in 1969. A buck seventy five. People were probably sitting around saying, "Like, buoys are going to be two dollars before you know it." Yeah. Gosh darn it. Oh, which I love Witchmaker. Yeah. Wow. And uh, two uh, William Griffiths on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Three of them are in color. This program rated M. Wow. I'm into that. M for mad. Yeah. In the mad room. Oh, the mad room. Oh, Shelly Winters and Stella Stevens are in the mad room. You know, um, Sting of Death had a song called Do the Jellyfish by Neil Sedaka. Oh, that's right. Oh. Who is in? Neil Sedaka is in Playgirl Killer next week. He's Thank you. He is, yeah, he is in that movie. Exciting. Here's another nicer oh, ad for another one. Sweet oh. Body of Deborah. Wow. I really like this ad. George Hilton, Luigi Pastilli getting up in there too. Man, that's a great ad. You know, I, I never noticed till now there's a spider web in that ad. Uh -huh. Wow. I never saw that before. Oh. Maybe I never had a nice enough ad. <laughs> This yeah, one, this one's nice. That's a clear. really pretty one. Anyway, speaking of pretty, do you have anything to show us that came in the mail this week? Nothing came in the mail this week. What? Can you believe it? Yeah. 
nothing this week. I can tell you what's going on on the site, though, if that helps. Yeah, it does. All right. Well, this week we'll be doing the last week of the research uh, Incredibly Strange Films book. Um, the Cool and the Crazy, The Atomic Cafe, High School Confidential, Super Vixens, all sorts of stuff this week. Uh, also, uh, on the site last week, uh, some fun movies, White Slaves of Chinatown was on there, Wild Guitar, Black Shampoo, Corpse Grinders, Motor Psycho, These Are the Damned, which I really love, um, Monster or Go-Go, which we talked about last time, Pink Flamingos got up there. Werewolves on Wheels, Fester Pussycat, Kill Kill, 13 Ghosts, a lot of different stuff. Um, recorded three episodes of the podcast today, um, including uh, one of a Jackie Gleason movie that I'm super excited. It's probably the longest episode I've done, uh, 21 minutes of me talking about this movie, um, as well as Jackie Gleason's in, uh, involvement with Aliens. <laughs> it gets deep. Um but I'm going to have two episodes this week, Bill. There's going to be a special Easter-themed episode on Friday, or Good Friday, and then there will also be a new episode this week, too. And the tease for that one is it's a Japanese movie. Um, so pretty exciting. And then starting April 1st will be the April Movie-thon. Uh, there'll be one theme every day. If anybody would like to write for the site, let me know. But there'll be different themes every day, and I'll tell you the themes for the first week. So it's pretty exciting. April 1st theme is Movies That Bombed. April 2nd is Mondo. April 3rd is Movies That Rip Off Other Movies. The 4th is a TV series to a movie. The 5th celebrates Michael Moriarty's birthday. And the 6th is a movie that is on the Church of Satan list. Uh, I've done most Ooh. of those already, but there are uh, they're, they're certainly quite a few left to hit. So pretty exciting. sounds like a lot yeah a lot and don't forget to listen to bill's appearance on uh making tarantino the podcast discussing mausoleum and uh another alumnus will be appearing pretty soon too but uh we'll probably talk about that next week so that'll be pretty fun uh and uh this week my podcast was about the gong show the movie about 50 people try to guess what it was no one guessed who would guess gong show the movie uh would be the, the movie um that's a longer episode too because i put a lot of the songs from it um i'm determined never to make any money from the podcast so i always put samples from the movies and then that means that they can't be cleared and i can't put ads on the show but you know what who cares right this ain't about making money but if you would like to sponsor the show as bill said you always can for next week that's right you can make a donation to us at via paypal Groovy doom at gmail.com. And uh, we'll put your name in the credits of the show as a sponsor. Yeah. yeah. And we appreciate your help. Thank you very much. And we appreciate everybody yeah. coming out again every week and watching the show with us. And we had a couple new folks this week, too. Remember to like, share, tell your friends. If you dig the show and you know people who like movies, chances are they're going to like the non tent, too. And uh, <laughs> the non tent. The I love the non-tent. Uh, hey, let, let's look at this before we go. Oh my gosh. This is uh, all four weekends of October 1983 at the Thunderbird Drive-In. Uh, and may I direct your attention to the first column, which has The Legend of the Bayou and Beyond the Darkness playing oh, wow. on a double bill. What is Legend of the Bayou? Is that... um? It's one of your favorite movies of all yeah, time. Yeah, is that is that Starlight Swamp? <laughs> yes. Starlight yes. Slaughter. Starlight Slaughter, yeah. AKA eat, Death eat Trap. AKA yeah. Horror Hotel. And yes. And that's playing with Bo Omega. Uh no, that's Beyond uh, Oh, this is playing with Beyond the Darkness. Okay. Beyond the Darkness is uh, that uh Magdalena. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm gonna tell you that I really like dead zone and, and wrath of Khan together that's a wild double and uh i man easy money in breathless is a, such a weird double feature uh, i know and God. I, I, what a wild one and revenge of the ninja and bad monkey at kung fu i would definitely go see so uh pretty pretty rad let's see what's going on in the second comp 
the man with two brains in vacation is pretty good and sweater girls and van nuys boulevard is pretty great too isn't that but, um the guy who did melting man yeah it sure is and then uh Halloween three and the thing is pretty great, but column three bill is great. Escape two thousand isn't that the uh, Omen ripoff? No, Escape two thousand is uh, it's like a death race type thing. Ah, okay. I'm thinking of uh, of okay, but Mortuary and the Grim Reaper is is really probably the one to go with, right? Or is it Young Warriors in the Hearse? Both, both are. Or would you go see Tootsie at the Drive-In Bell? There's a lot to, to think through here. Uh, yeah, I would never turn down an opportunity to watch Tootsie. Uh, I don't have to see it at the Drive-In though. I think Mortuary and Grim Reaper is the uh, is the uh, best one. Private School and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh. I'm going to look up Escape 2000 just so I know exactly what it is. Could it be the Bronx Warriors? It is. Thank you very much. I see that uh, Tracy said it is Escape from the Bronx's other title. Wow. That's what it played on Mystery Science Theater under. Wow. Okay. I've changed my mind. Death Race 2000 and Escape from the Bronx 100% is what I would go see. Or what, man, two Richard Pryor movies is pretty rad too, though. I mean, that's that's pretty exciting too. Yeah. Theaters Richard three Pryor was a genius. Theaters three and four showing the adult movies. Um, also, private school in Fast Times at Richmond, Richmond High. And how can I turn down Strange Brew and Young Doctors? Young in Doctors Love? in Love. Oh my God. Valley oh. Girl and the Beach Girls. Oh. Uh, the Beach Girls is Bud Townsend. Yeah. Good call. From Terror House. Man. This drive in is amazing revenge of the ninja sam why are you not <sighs> jumping all over oh i that? i yeah i mean 100 percent. i love that movie um there's a new uh kino blu-ray of it coming out um if you don't own it you, everybody should own that movie um Elden, we did do mausoleum it's been yeah. on the show yeah but man, mortuary and the grim reaper is a really great double feature young warriors is really good though another canon movie and that's playing with the hearse which is a whiplash but yeah sure tough enough in the final option Oof. turkey shoot that's the other movie i was trying to think of i think that's oh. escape 2000 is is it oh maybe it is i like that movie too though it's uh Brian but Jones I think Smith. Escape 2000 is the, is one of the retitles of Bronx Warriors 2. I'm so confused. I was thinking of Holocaust 2000. That's the one that's the, yeah. the one Omen, Omen ripoff. That's the one I was thinking. A.K.A. Is, the Chosen. Yeah. A.K.A. Lucifer's Curse. Yeah. Oh, that's a great title. Mm-hmm. It played with the Hex Massacre. Oh. As Lucifer's wow. Curse. I love that. Well, Tiger's Claw and Coil of the Snake too. So it's really interesting because, like, depending, there's this. What what drive-in was this, Bill? In Fort Lauderdale, they really hit like every genre of exploitation. As so there's well two as two drive-ins, Thunderbird yeah. and Lakeshore. They hit um, both like some big Hollywood releases. Not huge. Well, Star Trek Two is a, a pretty big release, wouldn't you say? Yeah, but there's a lot of other stuff mixed in there. That's what I mean. Like, so there's like Italian stuff, there's Hong Kong stuff, there's straight up a, a lot of canon stuff with Revenge of Ninja and Young Warriors. There's private school. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's pretty wild. There was a certain kind of movie that didn't play at at these kinds of drive-ins, like you know, <laughs> the French Lieutenant's Woman. Yeah, wouldn't have been showing probably yeah. at the drive-in i don't know maybe there was but you well see oh, i that... didn't realize that killing machines killing machines and revenge of the ninja played together too that's another and legend of the bayou and halloween together is is how about that yeah. dusk to dawn halloween 2 halloween 3 and the thing oh 
my god this, this is amazing this there's so much richness to look at in this like this feels like something that you just want to look at as much as you can yeah i don't know i get i i obviously i get nostalgic for this kind of thing but i, I just i miss when this was an actual choice that you could make Mm -hmm. for your entertainment and that there were films to fill all these slots you know like that mm -hmm. the, the the content today isn't like that mm -mm. to me anyway like i wouldn't get excited about stuff today as i as i would have at this time when you could go chris, to a drive-in and watch all these different things chris calls out that the escape 2000 years probably turkey shoot because new world had both those and it's playing with death race 2000 so that makes sense either one i mean i'd be happy with seeing either one so you wouldn't you would not substitute turkey shoot no but you i mean i want to go I mean, back to your first choice yeah bronx is is where it's at but i mean to see the grim reaper to drive in come on yeah that would be awesome yeah i would love that i would love that yeah i like that movie more and more every time i watch it and you oh, know I love it. the fetus yeah. scene is gross and i really don't need it in the movie no. And as Mike Justice pointed out, the music in the American cut of Grim Reaper is a lot better than the original soundtrack. So I would have been fine seeing the Grim Reaper. That would have been exciting. Yeah. It would have been. Man, there's a... That ad is... Oh, I'm going to think about that for days. <laughs> what I would go see. Pretty good. Well, that was four different weekends in October. So you didn't have to make... You could go... To the drive-in probably once on a friday and once on saturday so you got to pick two double features a week if you were hardcore you could go during the week too yeah plus Only it's florida so i mean it would have been nice and warm and always perfect weather you know what i mean at that time of year so that's great i was thinking of other drive-in double features i saw in uh one time in dc i saw rob i saw uh of doom and uh the philadelphia experiment which is a kind of fun double feature oh that's awesome yeah the philadelphia really experiment thing. yeah which i knew nothing about and we saw it and was like wow this is really good um you know michael praise in it that's when everybody's like michael praise gonna be a big star he's like no not but you know he's still in movies today so i mean he's doing fine but i really like philadelphia experiment i think it's a fun movie that came out Right around the same time as the final countdown. They're very, very similar yeah. uh, movies, you know. But uh yeah, Temple of Doom was a fun movie to see at the drive in and it was at this drive in uh close to Washington DC. I can't remember what town it was in, but the coolest thing about it was they had outdoor seats that were almost like theater seats, but they had bleacher rows of them. So if you didn't want to sit in your car, you could sit outside and watch the movie. Uh and they oh, were that's like cool. Yeah, and they were back like right like uh perpendicular to the uh where the projector was so you had the view of, from back there but you could see the screen really well so we sat there for the first movie and uh, it was it was really cool so it was a a fun way to, to watch those i'm trying to think of some of the other ones i'm gonna have to at some point bill we should do maybe a spotlight 88 deep dive uh on <laughs> on the show and, and see which ones i had seen it's spot and it's also gonna make me super sad because it was 10 minutes from my parents' house, and I know there's going to be some amazing stuff on there. I've forgotten a lot of the stuff that I saw at the drive-in. Um, mm. There's certain movies that I remember seeing. One time, heartbreakingly, I went to see Brew Baker at the drive-in, mm. and it was a double feature, and the other movie on the bill was Alien. Oh, man. That was the second movie, and my That's mom incredible. wanted to see the Brew Baker. So we went, and as soon as the movie was over, she left because she didn't want to sit and watch Alien. Oh, man, that's crazy. I saw Police Academy, and I can't remember what it was with. I know I definitely saw Police Academy at the drive-in with my with my parents, which is, you know, crazy because it was an R-rated movie. And um, I know I definitely saw uh, Super Fuzz at the drive-in, too, which was pretty fun. Uh, and I can't remember what it played with. I think it played with Condor Man, actually, the Disney movie, which seems weird. Uh, but yeah. 
I remember seeing kids stuff at the drive-in, like uh, Herbie the Love Bug. Oh yeah, stuff like I saw that. the uh, what's the one the something Avenue of Regulars. I saw that, and I know I saw the Apple Dumpling Gang um, at the drive-in. Yeah, and it played with the Rescuers. I remember that. I saw King Kong at the drive-in too. This is my baby. Yeah. And I, I feel like I may have seen King Kong at the drive-in too. Now yeah. that you mention it, I saw the the Island of Doctor Moreau. Oh wow! The drive-in Michael York one. Um, from nineteen seventy-eight. Yeah, yeah, he's in that one. Wow, that's crazy. I'm trying to think what I, I'm sure I saw a lot of Disney stuff as a kid. You know what I mean? Because that was easy to take me to. And uh, I know I saw Peach Dragon there. I saw both. And the remake of Peach Dragon uh, at uh, Dependable. I know Escape from Witch Mountain. I saw that definitely at the drive-in. I saw yeah. that at the drive-in. Yeah. One of them. The one the one with Christopher Lee and Betty Davis. Was that the sequel? Yeah. Return yeah, to Witch the, Mountain? Yeah. Yeah. I like that movie. I'm trying to think what else I, I've seen. I know. I think I saw Close Encounters at the drive-in. I know I saw that there. The other place that we went a lot, there was a theater in Newcastle that had a Wednesday dollar day, and we went to see a lot of stuff there. Like I saw both Cannonball Runs there. I saw every Bond movie that came out there. But it was like from, I think it was from noon till six in the summers. It was a dollar to go to any movie. So my parents would take us to whatever was new out. You know what I mean? And uh, they only had four screens. So like we saw all sorts. I saw uh, Incredible Shrinking Woman there. I saw Tootsie. A lot of them. You saw Tootsie at the drive-in. So no, there the you theater. go. Not the theater. The small theater I saw it. Oh, okay. Yeah, but man, that was awesome. I wish I saw Tootsie at the drive-in or The Incredible Shrinking Woman. That's an awesome lineup. Yeah. Chris Fasonic. Wow. I saw Inframan at the drive-in. Oh, I can't even imagine. Oh, man. Inframan I remember and, it, uh, too. Yeah, Inframan and Yeti is one of my favorite double features we did. I know. That was, a, that was a so fun. Yeah. That was a really fun double feature. Those are two movies that are great to watch together. Yeah. They're both great, yeah. Oh. So next weekend, we got some really sleazy, scummy movies that we're going to watch. And you're going to yes. love it. Centerful Girls and Playmate Killer. Playgirl Play Killer. Killer. Playgirl Killer, which will be fun. And uh, so looking forward to that. And uh, we'll have a blast as always. And uh, it's something to look forward to through the week. Bill, thanks for all your hard work as always on it. Thanks to everybody in chat for being as smart as you guys always are and as fun and for uh, hanging out so late. What time is it? It's uh, yeah, 2 18. It's, uh, yeah, 2 18. We got 18 people. Oh my gosh. We used to be excited when 18 people came early. So this is yeah. uh, very cool. <laughs> Yeah. Pretty great. All right. Thanks, guys. So, uh, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Go check out. And check out Sam's podcast for BNS about movies. And we'll see you next week here on the show. Bye bye. Hey, guys. Under 17, not admitted without parents or guardians. or guardian.